Beloved, would you pray with me? Oh God, this world needs that peace, salam, shalom. And so do we. So we ask that you take our lips and speak with them, take our minds and think with them, take our hands and work with them, and take our hearts and set them on fire with love for you and all of creation. Amen. This is not a Monty Python skit. What is your favorite color? Picture it. Picture your favorite color. It's that portion of the visible spectrum of light that is reflected back from a surface to you. Picture that favorite color. What's the color of heaven? there a resonance there or not? I think we take from the ancients the idea that heaven is, is up, and it's often linked to, to, to the clouds of, of white or, or the sky of blue. Well, color, conversely, is the earth. We often think of it as verdancy and, and, and the green grass that flows, the greenness under our, our feet. I wonder if we were to exchange those two and think about the earth as blue. It is, in fact, 71% water, that tiny blue dot floating in the sea of space reflected back to us. What kind of a, a swapping of that color might inform our decisions about taking care of this ocean planet where water is indeed life? So too, if we were to picture heaven as green, that, that earthiness, that, that here and now-ness of heaven, might it bring our gaze to look for the divine down and here and now. This morning, we hear throughout our scriptures so well read by Marnie for us, light, color, the reflection from a surface. Arise, shine, for your light has come. Nations shall come to your light, Isaiah says, and then you shall see and be radiant. Your favorite color in community reflected back and back and forth and back again. Everything exposed by the light becomes visible, for everything becomes visible that which is light. Sleeper, awake, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Hide it under a bushel? No. I'm going to let it shine. When we here in this space hear of this idea of light coming into space and spaces, more light, right off the bat we linked to one of our two parent denominations in the Presbyterian Church USA, think of radical equity for all of God's beautiful, beloved people, all genders, all identities, all expressions. More light, more inclusion, more representation, more witness, more illumination, more justice, more transformation for all of us. Thanks be to God for the work of the More Light Movement. So friends, today in church, when we hear that and we link that to a rededication of clear story windows way above our gaze, way up here, we think of the call to justice, the invitation for all of us to find more transformation. Sleepers awake, even when you get an extra hour of sleep, arise, shine, for there's more that's going to come more light needs to shine. Clear Story Windows first came to our world through incredible architectural feats on the African continent. From there, they spilled over into what is now known for us as a crucible, maybe, of context, of complexity, of sacred and holy lands in the Middle East, and that temple of Solomon had indeed in it clear story windows held aloft by an angled roof and a central ridge pole. 
so our holy scriptures describe. And then, of course, that spilled over once again into the, to the European context, the Greek and the Roman architecture, those Roman basilicas and later churches, holding up these windows high on walls so that what? More light would shine. It was great technology, and it made a real difference. In this space, in this sacred sanctuary here at Newbury and Berkeley Street, in the late 1890s, we know the story well, part of the entire Tiffany Studios extreme home makeover of this space, when all of the windows that looked like this, these ones here, the, the gorgeous red and blue and green and pink, were transformed entirely by Tiffany windows, these 22 clear story windows became the designation of that which was called opalescent glass, that special translucent opal-like glass technology with varied colors and textures, swirls and streaks in a single sheet of glass, creating a multifaceted luminous effect of painting in glass. These 22 clear story windows, which I think is good. You can't quite see them where you're seated. You will as you move around at the end of this service. You can see some of the ones toward the west here in front of you, designed by Frederick Wilson, were designed intentionally in the Gothic tracery uh, uh, to be an opalescent glass sky in two alternating patterns of green and blue, heaven and earth intentionally are, uh, uh, designed that careful blending and execution entirely without the use of any paint, creating what is likened to a beautiful sky for folks to come as close as they can in an inside space to the wonders of nature, revealing Tiffany's love of the earth, the love of all things beautiful, of reclaiming the reflections from a surface into the eye of the one gazing and the one worshiping. These are often lifted as ornamental windows. I do not like that designation. In contrast to the figure windows, for friends, these windows deeply tell a story. They're far more than ornamental. They tell a deep story that is, in fact, above the biblical story and the narratives that we see here. They are not limited to culture, time, or space, or even our own tradition. They are of heaven and earth, of the celestial and the terrestrial mixed together. They are indeed telling a clear story that God is in this world and is not limited to our understandings, not even limited to heaven or earth. These windows to us speak of Jubilee, specifically nature, specifically the climate, as you see the sky reflected in those spaces. We lift here at Church of the Covenant climate Jubilee, that sacred movement of liberation for racial and eco-justice. And we heard that lifted in our psalm today that we all read, the one who made heaven and earth, the seas and all that is in them, who keeps God's promise forever, giving justice to the oppressed food to those who hunger, vision to those who are lacking. These ring true for us, reflecting the words of Isaiah in other spaces, and Jesus picking it up in, in Luke 4 as he unfurls his missional statement on the world that we simply echo here as a church. So clear story, blue and green are ultimately the color of jubilee, colors of liberation. I lift my eyes up to the mountains. Where does my help come from? It comes from God, you, maker of heaven and earth. Today we celebrate and give thanks to the many people who donated to make this restoration of these windows come true. We include that thanks to the National Fund for Sacred Places that allowed us to kickstart our campaign that we name as Renew the Light intentionally. And I think we can also link in the National Fund for Thin Places in their name, knowing that indeed when we celebrate the coming close of heaven and earth, reminding ourselves that really in God there is no difference between the places of God, heaven, and the places of humanity and creation, earth. There is no difference in the gaze of God. 
And I think that when we think of these windows, we too can walk into those thin places in a few ways. One, we will rededicate today in our service with a liturgy, these words, today we rededicate ourselves as living windows. May we too be renewed as portals of God shine. Portals of God shine. Do you believe it? Are you a, a window that is worthy of that designation? Are you ready to be restored? With the power of heaven, may we illumine the truth that all people in creation are worthy of restoration, we will say. While rooted on earth, may we be renewed in the work of love, justice, and peace. Today's service, today's scripture, today's worship requires us to look in the mirror and ask that question, how do I see myself? How do I really see myself? Do I let the voices of the critics drown out the voice of God? Do I hear my own inner critic speak loudly of incompleteness, of brokenness? Or do I hear the voice of God, that I am created in the very image of God, speak louder than all? Do I see myself as, as worthy of Roberto's restoration? Do I see myself as someone who is being put actively back together again? Today's service allows us to ask the question, what is our clear story? What is the vision that needs to be made plain in our lives from Habakkuk? What is the thing that God is asking each of us to work out, to live out with the time that we are given, short as it is on this earth? Mary Robinson, one of our sacred stewards of this sacred space, will often point out, uh, as she has to many of us, the look toward the west, that once or twice, maybe a season, you can catch the light hitting these western windows at just the precise time, and the white borders quickly turn golden. They sparkle. They become alive. This reminds us, friends, that where we are as windows in our world matters. Where we show up matters. If we are always on the north side, we may miss some of that light shine, that, that God shine. But if we position ourselves toward the south side as the sun streaks through the sky, we might just amplify more light a little more powerfully into our world. This is a powerful message for our world right now that knows too much terror, tanks, and triggers. As we try to find and become people that show up in brave and bold spaces that raise banners that say black and trans lives, yes, indeed, matter, they are beloved, that raise banners in a world that say ceasefires matter more than retributive or restorative justice, I don't care how complicated the story is, it is simple in the eyes of God. We need to work toward those places and position ourselves not in places of judgment or self-righteousness, but humility and reflection of the divine light. I love the line in Isaiah that was nestled into this morning's reading. Who are these that fly like a cloud and like doves to their windows? Who is it who is actively positioning themselves toward that place of peace? And later, in that reading. I will appoint peace as your overseer and righteousness as your taskmaster. Violence shall no more be heard in your land, devastation or destruction within your, border, your borders. That was a powerful word to those in third Isaiah who had recently been returned from exile back to their original lands. It is a powerful word for us in our world today. Friends, we find ourselves in these thin places not only when we take on the, the meaning of a window and we put ourselves right up there in the clear story, but when we also take on the role of light itself. Remember what Ephesians says, for once you were in the shadows, but now in God you are light. Walk as children of light, for the fruit of light is found in all that is good, true, and right. And Jesus says what? You are the light of the world. Light is a spiritual force. 
It's a way for us to approximate the very description of the sacred movement of God, and we are a part of it, and it is within us. How easy it is for us to forget that and to, to demean a neighbor or to overlook someone who reflects God as much as we do as well. We are to walk in the light as we are light. Heaven as green as here and now spiritually and spirituality on earth reminds us what the early Christians knew for those first 300 years before Constantine made Christianity the imperial religion, that heaven was never the destination. Earth always was. The goal of the early Christian community was to what? Make earth like heaven. Your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. This was the prayer we will lift again today in maybe new language. Your heavenly will be done by all created beings. Your commonwealth of peace and freedom sustain our hope and come on earth. It was only later the Christian story said that it's all about preparing yourself to get somewhere else when you die. The early Christians believed that it was to make this world ready for the coming of God again and again into our midst. How might that shift if we think of, of heaven not as blue and white above, but perhaps as green in the here and now? So your favorite color, the color of heaven, what might it be? I wonder if not only we think of it as green, but heaven as black and brown. For if heaven is that shorthand code for divine spaces and God showing up, it's good for us to remember that our faith revolves around a brown-skinned Palestinian Jew named Jesus who walked the sacred black soils while singing out into occupied landscapes, this little light of mine, I'm not going to hide it under a bushel. I'm going to let it shine. This renewed light of Jesus. This project that we celebrate today reminds us that light is not white. Light is truth, illumination. As Ephesians reminds us, everything exposed by the light becomes visible. Too often our history in our country and even in our church links light with right, links light with white and right and the supremacy of it all. So as we celebrate today, friends, in our completion of the Renew the Light campaign, I'm really excited that we're going to celebrate a new beginning of our Reframe the Light initiative. Those of us, all of you who have given so generously to this project, have given 10% tithe of all the money that was given to restore these windows to a Re Reframe the Light project, which is all about racial justice through artwork. The light that flows into this beloved sanctuary that it is now renewed does not always tell the true story. The windows here, the figured windows here, are limited by those who put them first in place by a Eurocentric worldview that lifted white supremacy above the beauty and truth of God in our world. Such de depictions are not only historically inaccurately Historically inaccurate, I would add, maybe the Roman centurion is maybe the only true white person in history that is lifted in our windows. The rest, far not so. But the problem with this is that it, ecclesiastical stained glass whiteness has contributed far too often for the harmful set of false narratives that erase the truth of people of color, not only in the biblical stories being essential, but also of their essential belonging to the long and complex history that is our faith story, essential. So friends, we have a chance in 2023 to begin to reframe the renewed light that is coming into our space and kick off a new arts initiative that is going to install, God willing, new art that honors the aesthetic in this space, but transforms it and lifts us to tell a much deeper and much more true story. I'm excited about this work. 
the end goal is not the only goal. How we do it as a community, the conversations we have, the intention and the work that we have to do, starting with a program called Sacred Reckonings this winter that many of you are signed up to take, is the beginning where we begin to look at some of the deep truths in our own lives and our connections to the wider work of racial justice and where that might lead us, the conversations, the connections are equally, if not more important than the final product of God willing, some beautiful, inspiring and challenging art in this already sacred and soon to be made more sacred space. So friends, may we in the work ahead, remember that there is more light yet to shine and that we are an essential part of that jubilee and that work. I'm excited about what is to come. I invite, we invite as a church, all ideas and participation. Because we're about to sing in our next hymn, we, the stewards of this life, each called by God by name, join with earth and oceans bright to sing our joyful praise. So remember, friends, that you are a renewed window, you are a fellow portal of God shine, and yes, you are a fellow piece of the light that is essential. Let us shine, let us shine, and let God shine. Amen. <laughs>